one. Welcome back once again to ESBR Boxing's YouTube channel. Delighted, as always, to be joined by Gregory Dahl. We are here to review the fight that has just taken place. Hamza Shiraz has become the first man to beat Austin Amo Williams um, in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Um, Greg um, got, got a first stoppage of the night. Um, round round number 10, um, a fairly dominant performance by Hamza Shiraz um, tonight. What, what did you make of it? Yeah, great to be joined by as always, Elliot. I thought it was quite a dominant performance by Shiraz. I think the first early rounds, I had it quite even after four. After that, I had yeah, I had Shiraz taking over, and it was it was really one way traffic from there. Williams, uh, he landed the odd good shot, but aside from that, it was really Shiraz's fight. What? Why? Why do you think it was? Obviously, Shiraz. There was quite a size difference in there. It kind of looked like they didn't really belong in the ring with each other at times. Shiraz, he's a big, tall guy. I think he's six foot three. He's very got very long arms. Um, it would be interesting to see the weight difference in there. That them tonight, Shiraz, I just thought looked so much bigger. What? Why did Shiraz win this fight, Greg? What? What? What was it? Kind of the the size, the jab, the tactics. What? What was kind of the key, the keys to victory for him tonight? Would you say? He's got a very effective style. He's got a really good jab, but to beat Hamza Shiraz, I think you you're not close range, you're not mid range. I think you're somewhere in between, just where he can't fire uppercuts off at you, but he can't keep you on the end of his jab either. If you stay in between there and you throw, that takes a lot of his credentials away. And he's a powerful man, so I'm not holding it against Williams for not being able to do that. But I think if there's a fighter out there who's going to beat um, Hamza Shiraz, I think that they've got to be able to, this distance, be in there. Just not too close, but not too far. And I think that Amber Williams, he was either inside or he was mid-range, and that plays right into to Shiraz's hands. Yeah, yeah. Look, just impressive by, by Hamza Shiraz tonight. I feel like We've arguably had had two upsets, whether they be small or big upsets tonight, with Willie Hutchinson and Nick Ball both both winning. But um, look, I think I think us on ESPL, we've got a little kind of sweepstake going on, haven't we? We all went for Shiraz. If we, yeah. we are not just saying that, we are being honest. The bookies had Shiraz as as a favourite as well, and that's what happened. And I think Shiraz now it's fourteen stoppages in a row. I don't think many 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 fighters in 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 the world of boxing can can say they've got that many stoppages in. In, in in a row. Um how did you how did you have it, Greg? Um I think look, everyone would have had Shiraz winning the fight. Um it was kind of we're in kind of the real later stage of, of the fight there. Did you have it kind of as a shutout? Were were, were you in a position where if Amma Williams had maybe won those last couple of rounds, maybe got a knockdown, it could have been close. Where was where was your head at going in the final round in terms of where you had it scored? Yeah, I think that as I said at the start earlier, I thought that the first four rounds were close. I think I had them to each. And then I scored everything mostly to Shiraz after that. I don't know if it was the seventh or the eighth, but there was there was a good round that was going for Williams. And then I think Shiraz caught me a few shots and it totally changed the round. I just gave, after round four, I think I just gave Shiraz everything. I have to be honest with you. Um, he just used his style to a great effect. Very, very difficult man. I've, you know, they commented on it. Um, Todd Grisham commented on it on his own. Never seen a guy that size who can hold his hands together and protect his whole body and his face for being that size. So, yeah, I think he just uses his. Um, <laughs> I think he just uses his credentials really well to, to his style. Um, but yeah, I honestly, early, I think after four rounds, it was just plain sailing. But you know something. I don't want to be disrespectful because Amber Williams didn't stop trying and he is one tough man for some of the shots that he took. Yeah, absolutely. Look, he um look, he had a bit of a busted face halfway through the fight. So yeah. fair play to him to kind of keep on going. And look, he wasn't far away from making it until the end of the fight. But um yeah, the fight the fight fight did 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 get stopped after um after the second knockdown. Um moving forward, Greg, this has been kind of painted as a final eliminator. Um, when it's supposed to be fighting Carlos Adames um, for the WBC title, obviously that title is is currently currently vacant. Vacant Carlos Adames is, is fighting in a couple of weeks' time. So, 
is the fight is this the winner of this is Hamza Sheriff definitely going to fight Carlos Adamas next wouldn't guarantee it but we hope so is Carlos Adamas going to win his fight in a couple of weeks that's not guaranteed so we're not sure when this when this fight will or if it actually is going to happen but one thing I will ask you as we kind of round off um is Hamza Shearer's going to win a world title? Still only 25 years old, by the way, which I find crazy considering how long he's been around for and how kind of mat the maturity of his performances. Um, do you, did you see this guy winning a world title at middleweight in the next couple of years? I think he very possibly can, Elliot, but I wouldn't like to see his first title shot against um, Alumna Cali. I think it's a good fight. I think Alumna Cali's maybe just a bit too good for him at the moment. But if he's going to win a world title, let him get one and then fight Alumni Cali after that. Don't send him to America and lose a push bid and let him go in with Alumni Cali. You've got a guy in this country that you can build. Put the money into him. Get get a champion over here. Get a damage over here if he wins. You know, that that's a winnable fight, but it's a hard fight. Um, but don't don't send him to America to fight Alumni Cali. Really put faith in your man if Frank Warren, if he wins this tonight, he's got $3 million. Well, maybe mm. put that into the hat and yeah, see if he can get a, a champion over here. But I think he can win a world title. Uh, a world title. I just don't think that I wouldn't throw him in with Alumni Cali straight away. No, no uh, uh, it's hard to say his name. Not sure how he's managed to say it so many times. Amakani, Paul Home will move on before we get slated too much. <laughs> see, seen, seen as the best middleweight in the world right now and it would be a surprise to see Hamza Shiraz face him next or in the next 12 months. Um, I'll make one more point, Greg, then I've got one final question for you. I'd I'd love to see Hamza Shiraz fight back in the UK. I think that when you look at future pay-per-view stars that Britain has, he's got to be top, he's got to be close to the top, top of the list now. I wouldn't say we were kind of yeah. overflowing with guys who are in kind of their mid to late 20s who you can really see being in big pay-per-view fights in the future. I think with him as well, he's going to move up in weight. He could possibly win a world title at middleweight, win a world fight for a world title at super middleweight. And I think he'll end his career fight, fighting at light heavyweight. I really do. He's got that sort of build where he's going to going to um, grow out in the next in the next four, five, six years. Um, so we will see what happens next for him. I've got one final question, Greg. It's about a domestic fight again so I always like firing these, firing these questions at you and seeing what you've got to say um, I know what you're going to say I know yeah. what you're going to say because yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a <laughs> this isn't scripted um, but here, here we, here yeah, we it's are it's actually not <laughs> no the people probably think it is but it's definitely not um, the two best um, British middleweights by most people are going to be seen as Hamza Shearer's and Chris Eubank Jr Liam Smith is kind of still hanging around. He obviously has that win over Chris Eubank Jr. So let's, let's not disregard him, but we're not sure yeah. what he's going to do next. Um, Chris Eubank Jr. now is a free agent. He is after kind of big fights, big paydays, as he always is. We hope to see him in the ring again soon. I'd love to see that fight. Again, look, we don't know how likely that is, but I would love to see it personally. Thoughts on that? Shiraz, what, I think it's a nine, 10 year age, age difference there. Um, two guys who are kind of both both big for the weight now. What what are your immediate thoughts if I was to kind of throw that question at you? Immediate thoughts. I don't blame him, and I don't think Chris Eubank will take it. I think you'll go for bigger fish. But if you're asking me, does that fight happen? And this is where I always say to SBR, I'm the most impartial guy. You know how much I like Chris Eubank. I've never denied it. Based on the last two performances. If I'm managing Chris Eubank, I avoid that fight. I think that he's just got a style that might... If you're getting hurt by Liam Smith, with the mm -hmm. greatest of respect to Liam Smith, like massive guy like Hamza Shiraz, and you're trying hard to make 160, it's it's not a fight that I would advise. No, I can't, I can't help but, but agree with you. But we'll see. See what happens. I think Eubank's after a big fight. If the money was right, maybe that's one he would consider, but we will see. Greg... Good to be joined by you as always. Um, it's getting late, but we've still kind of got a couple of a couple more fights to review um, of, of this, what's been a pretty crazy night. Greg, thank you very much for your time and I'll speak to you again soon. Thank you so much, Elliot.